All right, guys, so here we are on week 30 Monday, and we're going to talk about proportions, which are a variation of something you probably already know about, fractions, ratios. These are all types of relationships called multiplicative relationships because we use multiplication or division to get from one thing to the other. And in order to really see that multiplicative relationship, you really need to know your times tables. So if you're really good at your times tables, this is going to be easy stuff, especially when they tell you what the proportion is that you're going to be using to find your missing amount. So we need to get out of the thought of adding or subtracting when we're dealing with proportions or ratios or even equivalent fractions, because what we're doing is using multiplication or division, which still using our multiplication facts and times tables. Um, so it, it is very important to know those things. It makes life a lot easier um, in many different ways, but especially when dealing with portions, ratios, fractions, and many other elements of uh, secondary math. So let's talk about the six and 42 hundredths meters, M is for meters, is how many centimeters. And so what we need to know is how many centimeters are in one meter. Now the key here is that centimeters are smaller units than meters because it takes 100 of them to equal just one of these meters. So like anything, it takes more of the smaller unit to equal a smaller amount of the bigger unit. So our answer here, just using common sense and logic, should be much bigger than 6.42, 6 and 42 hundredths. So that concept of moving from a big unit to a small unit means our number should increase. So are we going to be multiplying or dividing by, if we're using whole numbers, are we going to be multiplying or dividing to make 6 bigger? We'd be multiplying. So using this proportion, we're going to multiply 6 and 42 hundredths by our proportion of 100 to 1. So 100 centimeters to 1 meter, multiply that by 6.42. And when you do 6.42 times 100, remember all we're doing is times 1, which keeps it the same. But then we're also multiplying two place values. So what we can do is just move over to place values. And that's going to leave us with our final answer of 642 centimeters. So this question, and like many others, as we continue through these weeks of morning work, have typos or weird ways that they have come through the computer code to turn into the PDFs that they are. Uh, but we can see what it says, and we'll continue to be flexible and work with that. So solving using a proportion, that's part of that word, right, is the same concept. We have 4.78 kilograms is how many grams. Now again, what's bigger, a kilogram or a gram? I hope you said kilogram. Now, you might think gram because gram is attached to this really big number. But remember, these two values, one of these and a thousand of these, are equal. They're the same amount. Okay? And so I can picture two groups. And these two groups are equal. Okay? And in this group, it's one kilogram. And in this group, it's 1,000 grams. That's supposed to be a G. There we go. And if they're equal, and we were to divide those into the pieces they are, the kilogram is a whole, right? So it's whole. That's it, one. But I need a thousand things to fill up this. I'd have to cut this into a thousand pieces, and it would be equal. All right, so maybe we like the linear models better. Let's use two rectangles that are equal. All right, this one is one kilogram. This one down here represents 1,000 grams. Now remember, they're equal. So let's cut this bottom one into 1,000 pieces. There's four, um, let's see, here's eight. Oh man, this is gonna take me a long, I'd have to, look, all these little tiny pieces, let's say there was 1,000 of them, are the same as just one of those. So each, if you just pulled out one of those little guys, one gram, isn't that a lot smaller? So remember, the bigger the number is, the smaller the unit is in your proportions. Which means, if I have four of these, the kilograms, and then some extra, seven, eight hundredths, 
I'm going to have a whole lot more of those. So since we're using whole numbers here, 1,000 is a whole number, are we going to be multiplying that or dividing that? We're going to be multiplying to get bigger. And when we multiply by 1,000, remember the 1 doesn't change the number, but then I have three place values that I can move my decimal to the right, right, making my number bigger, that I'm multiplying by. So it's going to be a 4, a 7, an 8, and then I have this gap. What do I fill that gap with? A 0, and now I'm going to need a comma because I have a four-digit number. So 4.78 kilograms is 4,780 grams. So let's look at this problem about the bird feeder. This is how much it holds. So this is the size of the bird feeder. And I drew a little model here of one and one half, which I then recognized since the, to figure out this size, I had cut the one in half and then I just added one of those on. So now I have one whole and one half. And to clarify that, I can even draw a one here and then you can see that I'm adding the one half, right? And so on a, let's say a number line, it might be like this. This is zero, this is one, and this is two. And you can see that one and a half would go all the way to one and then a half farther. And that that was equal to three halves. And then also I did my uh, two holes, which I tried to make the same size as the one there, right? And then I kind of imaginarily cut them into thirds because I'm dealing with thirds. And then I needed to add two thirds onto that. So you can see I have two and two thirds, which I could do the same sort of thing if I had a little more space, but I don't. So now the question is, what are we doing here? What's going on in this question? Well, two and two thirds represents how many cups of seed we have. Right, So I've got a container, let's say a container that's holding two and two-thirds cups, right? Uh, but my bird feeder that's outside only holds one and a half cups. So the question is, how many times can I fill the feeder with the seed that I have? Now we know I have more seed than the bird feeder holds, so my answer must be over one. I can at least start there. But then the question is, what, what can I do to set this up mathematically or algebraically? What am I doing with this and with this picture? And... I know some of you are probably thinking, well, if this is our hole and we're trying to put it into this, how do, you, how do you do that? Well, you don't. We're not putting all of this into this at once. We're asking, using this two and two thirds cups of seed, how many groups of one and a half can we make? What kind of question is it when you have a total or a whole and you're breaking it into equal groups? That's division. So we are dividing 8 and 2 thirds into groups of 3 halves. Now the question is, how can I do that? Well, yeah, you probably know, keep change flipping, all that other stuff. But what I decided to do was make common denominators or like terms, right? Because 8 cats divided by 3 cats is going to be 8 thirds cats and so on and so forth. But right now I don't have cats to cats or apples to apples. I have apples to oranges or cats to dogs. Thirds and halves are different. So I can make them the same by making them six. So again, we have that multiplicative relationship, why we need to know our multiplication facts. I make thirds into sixths, which is times two. So I multiply eight times two, and I get 16 sixths. And I multiply two times three to get six. So I do three times three to get nine. So now I have 16 divided by nine. And both of these are irrelevant. The six and the six are now irrelevant because they're just terms. I mean, what's 16 fish divided by nine fish? Well, just 16 divided by 9, right? Um, and so no matter what we do, if we make like denominators, we can then just divide across like always. Um, and this is like with addition and subtraction as well, right? Multiplication is the only weird one. So 16 divided by 9 is 16 ninths. And if it takes 9 ninths to equal a whole, that means I can pull one group of 9 out. And that leaves me 7 of those ninths left. So it's 1 and seven eight seven ninths sorry one and seven ninths times that it can be filled which means we'll fill it one whole time and almost another time but not twice which makes sense because one and a half twice would be three and two and two-thirds is not quite three so I know there was that weird typo thing down here. I used a white pen and crossed it out and then blew my blue, drew my blue 
number line from 10 to 25 because 10 to 15 would involve that 14. I have to go less than 15. And 25 is the max, uh, is, is higher than the max, so it would encapsulate all of my data, um, I think, as best as I could by breaking it into uh, nice round numbers, uh, or at least to the fives. So there you have minimum at 14, quartile one at 16, quartile two at 17, quartile three at 19, maximum at 24. So again, to understand percentages, we need to know what a per cent is. So I like to write it like this, 47 per cent, and I see that word cent, and I know that's per or for every 100. So it's really just 47 hundreds. It's a fraction. But I can't really simplify 47 because it's, I believe, a prime number. Um, but 47 hundredths times 143 is really what's happening here. What is 47% of, right, times uh, 143? And so remember, when we multiply by fractions, we get smaller, and a percentage of something is usually smaller than that. So as long as the percentage is less than 100. So what we're really doing is just 47 times 143, right? I got 6,721, but then we're dividing it by 100. Because we could also have written this 143 times 0.47, which is 47 hundredths as decimal, which means we're going to need two decimal place values, right? If this is our whole number, we need to move the decimal back twice when we divide by 100. And so that gives us 67 and 21 hundredths as our answer. So for area of a triangle, we've learned two different ways of saying the same thing, right? Multiply the base times the height and then divide by two is this one, right? Area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. But that's the exact same. Sometimes you'll see this one half times base times height because if our base is 10 and our height is six, that's 60. Okay, so we could all do that. But then are we going to divide it by two or are we going to multiply it by a half? Well, guess what? That's the same thing, right? Dividing by two and multiplying by a half is the same thing because they both mean cut it into two pieces. Groups of a half, right, or half of it would be cutting it into two pieces and dividing by two literally means cut into two. So both of these mean the same thing and they'll both get you to the answer 30 centimeters squared. So for this one, you can pick whichever one. I'm going to do 12 divided by 2. That's base times height divided by 2 is going to be 6 inches squared. And I'm going to circle it. So this is just like 1 and 2, but now we're given the smaller units. Pints are smaller than gallons because it takes 8 of those to equal just 1 of the gallons. 8 pints equals 1 gallon. So even if you don't know what PT is, we could recognize that it's smaller because, again, it's like having our two rectangles that are equal, right? But this bottom one is gallons, and it's just one whole, right? It's one gallon. The top one is 8, and these are pints, right? So 1 PT is much smaller than a gallon, right? So if I had 16 of these, wouldn't that be two of those? Wouldn't that give me 16? And so what I'm doing is 16 divided by eight because I'm moving from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, so my number should shrink. So 18 divided by six is two, two gallons. Now with trapezoids, remember you wanna make them into tr uh, two different or three different shapes depending on what you need. This um, must be a right angle. I didn't say that, but it must be. And so when I draw this down, right, five centimeters is on top. That means this bottom of the rectangle has to be five centimeters, which out of seven would leave me two more. So I'm gonna have a two by five, two base, five centimeter height triangle, and a five by seven, uh, sorry, a five by five square, because again, it's five here and five up and down. So the square is just length times width, which is 25 centimeters squared. The triangle, though, is base times height divided by two. And five, right, five is my height, times two is 10, and 10 divided by two is five. So now I just add my five centimeters squared plus my 25 centimeters squared, and I get my total 30 centimeters squared area of my trapezoid. And this one tried to trick you. It gave you the one before the two, but the one represents the hour or the time, and the two represents how many pounds of ham. So in one hour, I can cook two pounds of ham, which means if I had two pounds of ham, I would need to cook for one hour. So the ratio of weight to time is two to one, because for every two pounds, 
the ham needs to be cooked for one hour.